Okay, praise God. Because you have so much serious many times so far. Can you? Great song, great song, wow. Can I stand, please? You stand for five, I'll stand for 40, I'll stand for five. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14 to 21. Second Corinthians 5 verse 14. For the love of Christ motivates us. Having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us a ministry of reconciliation, namely, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might, come, we might become the righteousness of God in him. Father, we thank you for these words and thank you for the scriptures. And we pray, Lord, that as we begin to hear, and we pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to us in the words of reconciliation, the love of Christ, the motivation. We ask you, Father, for transformation in our lives as we partake of the word. And Lord, we ask you for strength and anointing for Pastor God as he preaches. And Lord, give him clarity in his voice, Father. And speak to our hearts, we pray. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Okay. This is the second message today on kingdom ethics. Can you tell me what's kingdom ethics? Come on, think about it. Kingdom ethics is how believers treat each other because of the values and ethics of the kingdom. Now listen carefully. We're going to speak about what it means, what it really means, the mystery of Christ in you and in the body. It's a wonderful message. Now the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Shalom, put that please, says something important. He said, listen, the love of God controls us. And we now know that one died for all. Shalom, verse 17. And therefore all died. What's it mean? What's it mean? This is what it means. Listen carefully. When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just die as a substitute for our sins. But when he died on the cross, we died with him. Yes, that we were buried with Jesus. And we rose with Christ. And the mind of God, he died for us and as us. So in God's mind, positionally and judicially, you died with Jesus. It was like God saw you, Christ taking a place where you were in him. You were then buried with him. You were then raised up with Jesus. And when God saying yes is, your life is no longer your own once you become a believer. 
you are bought with a price. Now glorify God in your life. You are dead to your own life, but alive to God. I had a story, Jerusalem, in North in Vietnam, the Vietnam Cong Congress. I was told by the captain to kill seven good people. They took them to a forest area, and this guy was a Christian, Vietnam guy, he'd become a Christian. He said to the people in the shoot, he said, listen, I'm going to shoot you. I just gave my life to Christ. He said, listen, go this way to the forest, and go 10 miles this way, come to a a railroad shack, turn left to find freedom. One of the people eventually, one of the people is free to become a believer too. He says, as long as I live, I'll never forget the man's face. That's what happens when Christ saves you. He says, now I'll never forget this Lord. My life is not our own, it's for you. Verse 15 says, One died for all, so all died, so that we should no longer live for ourselves. We live now for the one who bought us and died for us. What does it mean? You see, because before I got saved, you and I had only one nature was a sinful nature, we call the flesh. Shall I say flesh? Before you were saved, you had only one nature, the flesh. We call the sin nature, or a nature, Adam. And we, we live for ourselves. And we related to each other, how? In Adam, in the flesh. We knew everything about each other, life, weaknesses, we knew each other in the flesh. But after God saved, God gave us a new identity. And now God does not want us to treat each other after the flesh. He wants us to see each other after Christ and the Holy Spirit. This is very important to God. The next verse says, listen, it's an amazing verse, listen carefully. This verse is the key to the whole message. So now, we no longer recognize, come on, say it. Read it, please. <laughs> What's that mean? What does this verse mean? It says, we know, no, no, from now on we know no man according to the flesh, not even Christ. Now, Paul knew Christ in the flesh, he said Christ in the flesh. We are identical. What's it mean? It's in Catholic. It's powerful. You do not see Jesus, did you? You didn't see him in the flesh. You didn't see the man who healed the blind eyes. You didn't see Jesus raised in death. You didn't see him cleansing lepers. You didn't see Jesus in the eyes. You didn't see him hanging on the cross. You didn't see him on resurrection morning. You don't know Jesus in the flesh. But yet all of us know Jesus, right? You know Jesus? Yes. How do you know Jesus? You know him after the Spirit, after the Word. We know Jesus in the Spirit, you know him in the Word, he's word to you. And Paul's saying now here, listen, guys, I don't want you to know yourself as a 
I don't want you to know other people are first batch. I want you to know them, what, what the Holy Spirit says about them, what the Word of God says about them. And what the Word of God says about them is so powerful. Why is it so dramatic? Why should we see people in Christ? It's so powerful because of what God did in people's lives that's so powerful. The Holy Spirit has changed us. We're not old people. We're brand new people. Listen to Ezekiel chapter 36. Oh, great verse. This, is, this verse is in the Old Testament. It was speaking of a new covenant God was going to make with Israel and ask that the church uh, bless, benefit by it. And God said to Ezekiel, listen, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the lands. That's what God did to us. Then I will sprinkle clean water in you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. What is speaks the word of God? I'll sprinkle you with clean water. I'll cleanse you from all your filthiness, all your idolatry. It's the first part. I'll wash you clean, God said. He said that in the Old Testament as a promise last to it. Next verse says, I will give you moreover a new heart as a new nature. I will put a new spirit in you as a human spirit. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my senses. You'll be careful to preserve my commandments. These verses are awesome. They're amazing if you understand them. You know what God says in the verses? He says this no. I do. He says, listen, believers, I will wash you clean by my word. I'll wash you clean, Titus chapter 3, verse 5, were washed clean by the Holy Spirit. Number two, I will put, listen carefully, I will put my new nature in you. Hallelujah. Don't you love that? I'll put my new nature in you. What's that mean? That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. It means that God puts in every believer, he not just forgives your sins. He puts in you a new heart, a new nature. A new nature, you know what the word says? Well, the nature, this nature is, is the likeness of Jesus. So I can think of me having a new heart transplant. Please understand that when you're being saved. You're all sin nature still there, but it's crucified. It's only operative if you give it authority. It's truth in life. But now we have a new nature. A new nature like Jesus. I like to think of his new nature in embryonic form as a nature of Christ, as a grown Christ, a mature, and feeling my new nature, operating my new nature. Also, not just that, it's a listen. I'll give you what? A new spirit. What does that mean? It means a dead spirit. As a fallen man, I'll make a line now. That's what it means to be born again. Now, through my human spirit, I can be now God conscious and heaven conscious. Understand that? And now, I'll not just do that. I'll give you my Holy Spirit to live inside of you. I'll come to live in you personally, believers. I will make your body in the New Testament. I'll make your body in the church, my very temple. I will come to live in you. And your body will now become the Holy of Holies. Holy of Holies, the very, very holy place of the Most High God. And God says, listen, I made you brand new. You're no longer old. 
Don't look at those flesh you have. Don't look at yourself after Adam. I made you a brand new person. Yeah, that's how I live tonight. That's awesome. So it says, the next verse says, Therefore, don't know yourself after the flesh. It says, Listen, for if any man is in Christ, praise God, he is what? Go on, say it loud. It's what? A new creation. Not just a new creation. He's a brand new creation in God's eyes. Listen, turn to your neighbor and say, you are a brand new creation. Turn to your neighbor, please. I mean it. You're a brand new person. You know, I can't recognize you. I don't know you after your flesh. I don't treat you after who you are, Adam. You are a brand new person. All things have what? Passed away. It was said, all things have what? Passed away. Behold, behold, behold. Look at me, behold. Look at yourself. General, I say, it's your husband. We just had a fight with this morning. <laughs> Say, behold, all things are new. It's the mercies that need every morning. And uh, Sunday flights is lot. We just realize this is a good one. Thank you, Jesus. Behold, everything is become brand new. Listen, say this after me. Repeat this after me. I am not my past. Say that. I am not my past. Behold, everything has become what? You am. Say this again. I am not my failures. I am not my sins. All the wicked things I did. Yes. Personality, all in Adam. That's first one, man never talks about Adam. Don't talk about Adam. I don't want to discuss people in Adam. I don't want to gossip. Do I know what gossiping is? That's how I say we gossiping. Gossiping means very simple. You're talking about things you shouldn't talk about. <laughs> and you know it. If you listen long enough, get spiritual enough. Did you know this person? Oh, he yeah, has a good job. <laughs> it's like an old woman. Oh, with an woman from Goa. <laughs> A killer. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Send me back in to end up with people. Come on. What they looked like, what they wore, what they said, who said what. It is time. I think after the way you say, listen, do you have anything to say about anyone else that's positive? Do you see Bill Christ? That's such a bad habit. And it, I'll tell you what, it takes away your anointing as a Christian. If you are a man or woman who constantly discuss the people, you have no anointing. And people know it too. You won't touch them. Stop talking about people. Stop it. I want to know no one after the flesh. When somebody speaks to me or someone, I say, listen, but no one to the great people. End of conversation. Or oh, they're growing in Jesus. I don't talk about the flesh. You see, what I want to see is who they are in Jesus. Christ and what God's doing in their lives. We have been 
moon by a little. If it moon by a little, I'd rather talk about Christ to them and Christ in them. Listen, Jesus said, listen, don't judge people. Have mercy. It will be merciful for you to be received long that. My message is said, don't condemn. Well, what we do instead, we pray. Instead of saying that person did this, that person did that, helping what they did 10 years ago, and last year, and six months ago. Like you will list all the sins. Listen, you keep going that. Next time you see them, we can't have any fellowship. You will judge your people. I call it disease. Disease of planketitis and speculitis. You, know, you have a plank in your eyes, you trying to take a speck on somebody else's eyes. It's a serious disease. See, Jesus said that. Come let me take a speck from your eyes. And the problem is you don't know how to finish work. You have no revelation what the finished work really means. You know, theology, various messages, don't know the message application. Be anointed. Be spirit-filled. See people as Christ sees them. See potential. We say, go home and pray for them. If you need to go to them alone, if you need to go to the pastors and say, well, organization, let them deal with people also, it's fine. If you need to talk about anyone having a problem, come to pastor, he deals with them spiritually. Don't try to take us tricks on the people there. Seeing people in the new creation identity Christ is what I'm saying. Yes, and people have needs. You know that? Do you know that people suffer, many people suffer from guilt complexes. They did something in the past, they can't forgive themselves. They feel like God cannot use me now. I committed a wicked sin 10 years ago. I can't do it now. I have good news for you, my friend. I must forgive you. You made you a new person. And you are brand, brand new and you're worth, worth everything in Christ's life. And not just where God used you, He used you mightily, if you get to know who you are in Christ. And so already operating after the Spirit and the Word, and not after faith. I say, why did you, how could Jesus do this? The next verse says that, Shalom, please. Verse 21 says that, it says, it says Yes, and a great verse. Verse 21. Okay. I can't say the lilies that fill out my name. <laughs> he made him. Who made him? God made who him? Christ. He made him sin. Made, made, made him renew our sin to be sin on our behalf. Wow. So that we may become righteousness in Christ. God in him. Powerful blessing. Christ did not sin. He did not sin being made sin. Let me say that again. Christ did not sin to be made sin. God the Father put sin on him. God laid the sins of the whole upon him. That finished work. So he was made sin. Sinless place of one sinless body and cross. And all our wrath, all our punishment, all the sins of the world, all the curses of sin came upon Jesus. 
It was man of sin. That's what, that's all what God charged the sins of the whole world on Jesus' account. And then God did something else. He said, listen, to anyone around the world who believes in Christ, I was charged into, into their account Christ's righteousness. I'll make them righteous in Jesus. So when you believe in Christ, now what are you? Come on, say it. You are righteous in Jesus Christ. Sin is paid for. You are righteous in Jesus. How? 24 7. All day, all night, every day, righteous in Jesus. So now you need to know your new identity in Christ. You see that? I mean, you see, many people don't know their identity. As teenagers, I mean, your teenagers have a hard time somewhere. Growing up, I listened difficult. You know, what's, what's cool? What's it mean to be cool? I don't know. You go to college as a teen, trying to fit in. And many things you struggle with that. Because the world gives a different identity. The world wants a certain self-image. But the strangers do not know better. Some people have a poor self-image. They think, I don't like, I'm too thin. I don't like my hair. I don't like the way I look. I don't like my parents. I have a certain image because they, they look at themselves in the flesh, in who they are in Adam. But God, praise God tonight, we can have an amazing, amazing image in Christ. So we go to the world, the world, the world tell you, oh, got a poor self-image? Come, I'll teach you about healthy, high self-image, high self-esteem. I teach you, teach you to be confident in your flesh. I teach you to be, I teach you to be articulate. All that's bad. Sounds good, but not good. Sounds good, not good. What does God want? They don't want us to have a poor self-image. They don't want us to have a high self-image. God wants us to have Christ in it. That's it. I said, no, we died, we're buried, we're risen, we're not Christ, we're not with Jesus. We're an image right now in who we are in Christ. And by the way, this image, if you focus and live in the Holy Spirit, do you know the Bible says you are changed into his image from glory to glory by the Holy Spirit. So I look at myself and say, listen, Lord, Jesus said, deny yourself, right? Deny yourself. Take away the cross. Not have a good self-image in me. I said, I mean, how can I deny myself have a high, a good self-image? The idea is not this. Take away self. I don't know, focus on yourself. I form my image in who Jesus says I am. That's enough for me. I am who I am by His grace. And I am loved and valuable. I can do all things to Christ. Amen. Listen <coughs> carefully. I love this verse here. A few more verses of applause. It gets better now. Colossians chapter 1. Sorry. Yeah, verse 24. Read it, please. That's a powerful, powerful verse. Glory to us. We don't have time to discuss it today. But it leads up to something else. Go ahead, next verse, next verse. Go right to hand, please.
joy. Paul's saying, listen carefully, I've been given a message to preach around the world. A message the world, a mystery. What a mystery means, a secret hidden in the past, Old Testament, but now revealed in New Testament believers. And here's the mystery, is that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Say that back again. Christ is in me, the hope of glory. Listen, if you understand what the verse means, it should explode in heart. If the Holy Spirit really reveals what this verse means, you have an explosion heart. Christ is in me, the hope of glory. Christ is in Dr. Shaman, Christ is in Nina, Christ is in Prasanna, Christ is in Ivan, Christ is in every person here today. He's the hope of glory. That's a mystery. That is amazing. Now Christ is in me in the Old Testament. The Spirit will not give it. But now the New Testament, after Christ rose, is given now. So Christ is in me by the Holy Spirit. That's why I am a but new creation. I have a brand new spirit to know God. I have a, I have a brand new nature of the Holy Spirit in me. And I live this way with the mystery in me. Christ is in me. I have no confidence in my flesh. No confidence in it. My confidence in who I am in Jesus. And Jesus is in me. So Paul lives this way. Let's look at First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 please. This is Paul says here. It says, when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superior speech or wisdom for a verse two. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ. And what? Jesus Christ. When you're with people, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. No gossip, no, no, what they did, how they did, how they look, no. When I think about you. I don't know your past, I don't care where you've been. Are you don't tell me yours, I won't tell you mine. <laughs> Deal. No one needs to know. I don't know what your flesh is. I'm sister. I determined to do nothing about you except one of Jesus and him crucified. Let's talk about the Savior. Let's talk about Jesus. Amen? Let's talk about the wonderful Word. Let's talk about the anointed one. Let's talk about the morning star. Let's talk about the, the, uh, the Alpha Maker. Let's talk about the Lamb. Let's talk about the, the beautiful one. I know nothing about you. you have, a, have you ever watched Pastor Shalom? Come on, do that one. He never talks to people. You know what I'm interested? Go back and say, I want this, I want this, this, this. No way. So, it's all about Christ. I want to do nothing about you. I said, Jesus, you're crucified. Okay, go ahead, next verse, please. I was with you in weakness and fear in my stomach. And my preaching was not in blessed words of wisdom, but in the power of the Spirit of God. 
Why in this world, please? So we feed when our rest, wisdom learned, the power of God. Paul said, but I was with you. I was in, I was in love. Fear not fear of you. I lived in reverence of God. I was among us as we fellowship. When I came to speak to you, I was a dead and blessed man. I said to talk about God. And my words were not in the words of wisdom, eloquence. My words were a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. So the old faith will not rest in the power of men, but in the power of God. It will change your life with the Word. He said, listen, when I come to you to speak, I don't want to look at me and say, our oh, great speaker is. We look at that Word and say, what a great Christ exalts what a great message we have, what a great change I see. I see a change of the Holy Spirit in my life. It's a demonstration of power. So say that, say that to your neighbor. Come on, say that. Say, in me there is no good thing. Say that. Romans 7, 18. Jump to your neighbor. Sorry, I'm embarrassing. In me, Paul said, Romans chapter 7, verse 18, in me, there is no what? Is that true? In me, what? Is that the end of Satan? No. In me, there is no good thing that is in my flesh. Oh, there's a good thing in you. It's Christ in you. The hope of glory. There's something good in you. That's not of you. You say, I want to know you after Jesus, not after who I am. I don't compare your flesh with my flesh. I put no confidence in it. And he says this next thing, listen to very beautiful closing verses. We speak God's wisdom in mystery. The hidden wisdom which God predestined for the ages to our glory. The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age had understood, for the understood who were not in crucified. The Lord of glory, stop there one more. Who are the rulers of the age? Who crucified Christ? We think of Herod, Pilate, Romans, Jews, St. Hedrian. But beyond them was the devil, also ruler of this world. He says, listen, if the rulers of the age, I had known the mystery of Christ being in us, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I tell you why in a moment. The next word, please. Come on, read it. It's talking about heaven, but the context is the word wisdom. Which we wisdom and a mystery. Which we things that eyes not seen, ears not heard, and into the heart of man. Things about how much God loves the believers. Next verse says, But to them, right, but to for the last God read them through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit says to all things, even the rest of God. Wow, amazing. But to us, the Holy Spirit revealed it. 
Born of the Holy Spirit wills, the Holy Spirit wills that we are sons of Abraham, spiritual sons. We join the heirs with Jesus Christ, Galatians 3 9. Holy Spirit wills we are we are today a royal priesthood, first Peter 7, a holy nation, a chosen race, to declare his marvelous praises and light. That's what God said. Holy Spirit wills we are the heads, come on say that, we're the head and not the tail. We are believers, we're the city on the hill, we're the light of the world and salt of the earth. Holy Spirit reveals we are blessed when we go in the city and come to the city. The Holy Spirit reveals we are more than, come on, conquerors to him who loves us. Not just conquerors, we are more than conquerors. Holy Spirit reveals we are the body of Jesus Christ today on the earth. We are flesh and we are bones, we are members of Christ. We're united with Jesus today, first one. Holy Spirit reveals one day with the bride coming out of the new Jerusalem city, go on the earth. One day we will. Oh my, the Holy Spirit reveals over and over again. And we are something very, very special. Listen, listen, if the devil ever knew that, if the devil ever knew that when he killed Jesus, this would happen, he would not have done it. It's now he is in trouble, bigger trouble, bigger trouble. Hey, God, can Jesus end the story? If he dead, finished, buried over, didn't know he'd rise, didn't know he'd ascend, didn't know he'd pull the Holy Spirit upon us. Didn't know he'd forgive us. Didn't know we'd become a new creation in Jesus Christ. Didn't know we'd have a new heart. Didn't know we'd have a new Holy Spirit. Didn't know all those things. Did not know that Christ would be in us the hope of glory for all nations. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand. They know this. They know this. Listen, do you know this? You made a big mistake by killing Jesus. I'll tell you one more thing. If Jesus hadn't died on the cross, it should be alive to that. Simple, isn't it? See? I tell you what. If Jesus had not become a sin, we would not have to die on the cross. He didn't die because he was a sinner. He was made sinner. And the plan of God, God said, listen, you will go to the cross. You will die for the world. And we made sin. And because the pain of sin is death, you shall die on the cross. Jesus went. But he had to be put there by evil men and the devil. The devil put them there. Listen, if Jesus had not gone to the cross, if Jesus had not been made sin, he would still be alive today. Now, the same Jesus, listen carefully, he could not die. He was holy, sinless. The same Jesus was with the twelve apostles in Galilee, come down to the earth. If you had not go to the cross, you would never die. You're sinless. You should be alive now, walking the earth thousands of years later. A following word said. Of course, we know it's the life. It's life when the, well, the Holy Spirit in heaven right now. But the devil made a big mistake. So the saying here, if they had only known the mystery of God, I would not have killed the Messiah. Now, after killing the Messiah, because he died and rose again and ascended to heaven, 
He now has, if he is alive, the devil would have the man Jesus. He would have known I like that. I have managed one person in Jerusalem, maybe somewhere around the world, do miracles. We have managed one person. But now, when Jesus went out, he now has a Christ to mass, the whole glory for all nations. He has managed millions and millions of believers today of Christ living in them, in the body, manifesting his glory to all nations, to every tribe, every tongue, every nation. That's a mystery the devil missed. And we have the power of God today, the same power, and nothing can stop us. Do you hear me? Nothing can stop us. There's the same Holy Spirit who lives in Jesus now lives in you and you can go and preach to people and you can go and minister the gospel and you can see the power of God working in people's lives and nothing can stop you and the devil is knows us praise the Lord let's look at who we are remember who we are we are dynamite. We are dynamite on the earth. It's Christ. Christ lives in you. Don't ever relate to who you are in Adam. Don't ever talk about who people I am. Fellowship of God, Jesus. And see God's power manifested among us. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. If any man is in Christ, he has become a new creation. My friend today, you're here today in church, you know Jesus, would you like to forgive your sins, wash in the blood of Christ, going to heaven? Say a simple prayer. Jesus, forgive me my sins. I know I'm a sinner. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for rising again. Come to my life to live. Give me the new life that only you can give. Thank you, Jesus. And this morning, how many of you understand what you spoke about today? God is in me, Mr. Christ in me, and the body. We teach each other, we fellowship on who we are in the Holy Spirit and who the Word says we are. That's all we want to know. And here we see the anointing of God upon the church because of that. So we love you, Father, today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay.